Hello, friends. Welcome back to Star Wars Galaxies. I forgot to open my Twitch dashboard. That is not my dashboard. That is. Back on Dantooine, in the Vale, running some missions. I uh, actually went and picked up one of the... crafting kits that we needed. There we go. So we are 50% of the way there. It was 700,000 credits. And I would have gotten the second one, but they did not have it. So we're going to have to find one for our respect. Apparently we're all out. I think there's a place in uh, Gorath on lock that has them. We'll go run that down later. Maybe tomorrow. I got time to walk around and do nothing. Well, walk around and do shopping. And then we can run some more missions and get our cash back up. Something to do in the interim while we wait. And I got tied up recording something else earlier, so I'm a little bit late today. It's actually after 12 o'clock already. So I don't know how long this is going to be before I completely pass out and fall asleep. But I did want to get some missions in, and I was playing, so I figured, why not? Growly crawl. Here they are. Do my growl call. Intimidated and stunned. Amazing. I'm thinking tomorrow we're actually probably going to run out of combat experience too, so. I need to take action on that. And somebody had asked me why I'm not doing Bull Rancor missions, and mostly the reason I'm not doing them is travel time. actually looking at a lot of other things while I'm doing this, and it's kind of hard to do when you're on Dathomir. You end up losing speeders that way if you're not paying attention. I mean, generally, I'd be fine, but it is a little rough on your speeder when you're texting and driving and walk straight into a Night Sister pack or something. Wind up speederless. Just a smoking hulk of a bike left over. I didn't fix our bike, so that was good. And this one is hurtin's. Gonna put the hurt on some hurtin's. So, shouldn't be too bad. As so long as they run up in range, that's all I'm worried about. I don't think Hurtins have any sort of ranged attack. So I got that going for me, which is nice. Hurtin Howler. Yeah, they all want a piece of me. So fast, though. Don't 
dead. Time to go. Back to the mission terminal. That's a quick way to get 25,000 credits. And earlier today, I took our weapon armorsmith master artisan and got surveying three and got halfway through surveying, well, more than halfway through surveying four. So we need, I think we need about 4,000 experience to get the surveying four box and master artisan. And that should do it. And then weaponsmith which I can pretty much glide through now. Alright, back to the mission terminal. Well, at least this place got a lot of bases. South actually seem to be one of the harder directions from here to pull good missions. There we go. Good enough. Maybe we'll get an hour out of this at least today. Where am I at? I'm going to run into some buildings here for a minute. There we go. Scrawls or pikets? Scrawls. They're kind of far away. I hate walking. That physical exercise. Well, yeah, mostly that we gotta come back. power up in, but 
Also, I was just using it up. Peter. There it is. Totally ran in the wrong direction. Anyway, it's getting a little warm in here, and honestly, nothing makes me more tired than being very warm. So, if we're going to have any kind of success at making this run on a little bit, I need it to not to be so dag blasted warm. there now. Alright, Mock. You know what, Mr. Mock? Hey! You guys are gonna get it now. Well, gonna need a new bike. Better have something good. Got clothing attachment. Palm frond. Mocks. I don't feel like I got enough from them. Oh, I did get a clothing attachment. What's this one? Useless. Is how the rumor of the Loch Ness monster got started. Thank you. 
Got like two buttons here I gotta hit. This is real challenging. I think this is completely dead. Yep, fireworks. Alright, I think I got another one. Yep, I do. Always carry a backup. Just sucks that I just got it repaired. I mean, yeah, I know. I did not have to stop and fight the mock. What are you guys? Janta. Oh well, it's only 2,000 credits. Not like it's that much. And I pretty much got that back from him. Although I'm pretty sure the light lightning cannon CA is worthless. For one thing, it's only plus seven. For another thing, I don't think it really matters. It's as bad as getting an intimidation one anymore. This one, so we can replace our backup speeder. Yeah, I could tell I'm definitely not a hundred percent. It's been a long day. Well, today, actually. Later today will be a new day. All kinds of new days. Um, that one's closer, barely. It's Friday. Thank God it's Friday. 
Hello, Metatron77. How are you? There's my growls. Awesome. Glad to hear your discs are showing up so you can get on here. If you have any trouble, I got a bunch of videos on my YouTube channel on how to set it up and stuff. Or just send me an email. Whatever it takes. to help. Anytime I can get anybody back into this game, I'm all for it. He's dead. <laughs> Stop hitting him. flee. Hello, bowl. Uh, farming credits right now. Because I'm working on setting up an artisan master crafter house of all the crafts set up and ready to go. Most of them either mastered or have the stuff for it. And uh, except for armor smith, and I might need some stuff for droid engineer. And uh, just going to do like uh, what an artisan goes through on a daily basis. So I don't think anybody ever touches on that. So right now I'm just gathering credits to pay myself back for buying the 1.5 million in resources I just picked up. Not that amount of money. Just, uh, it's good practice that when you spend money to try to earn it back rather than wait until you need it and then try to earn it. That's how you get into trouble with your rent. Dark Jedi Knight. Looks pretty dark. Ah, well, I don't have time to kill him today. It just takes so long to kill knights and masters. And it's a little bit risky. 
Something just spawned up, which I hurt and which I hurt and's trying to put the hurting on me. So, so far on my artisan quest, I have done, well, one vendor with almost every tailored item that you can make, and uh, building a spreadsheet to do pricing, so I'm showing how I price things out, and tailor's the easiest because basically you can do tailor is flat rate since, well, you don't really care what resources you use and there's very little experimentation except for color and uh, you don't really need anything specific and you certainly don't need anything of any particular quality so you can buy one two CPU credit per unit resources throw them in a bin make some stuff out of them and sell them for four credits per unit and you're doubling your money. Yeah, minus factory time, so you put a little markup on the factory parts. Pay for the power, pay for the running of the factory, and so you could either do like four or eight credits per unit on your pricing. Uh, Taylor doesn't make the attachments. Taylor makes the clothes that can take the attachments. So they make the clothes that have the sockets that the attachments can go in. Same with Armorsmith. Armorsmith makes the one that the armor attachments go in. And the uh, sockets vary based on what piece of gear it is and a completely random chance. So you can have like one to four sockets on a piece of the, uh, clothing. They can hold a certain amount of clothing attachments. And then you have to move on to another piece of clothing. And Taylor can also work with the bioengineer to do bioengineered tissues into clothing to do certain things like uh, increase wound healing on a dancer or musician or anything like that. Oh yeah, it's it's one of the better crafting systems of any of the games I've played. The uh, the only thing is is there's so many ooh, so so many crafters now that it's really really hard to get a make a name for yourself. So you kind of have to do something to set yourself apart from the other crafters. But it's not impossible. Definitely not impossible. bounce this one too because I know it's going to go somewhere so let's send it yeah But, yeah, I really like crafting in this game. It uh, gives a certain amount of challenge more than most. That is probably the best plan is to... It's a really realistic plan that you have, actually, to... Uh, craft a bit to help your friends and you get started once you start making some money then you can buy those 10 million dollar weapons and 10 million dollar suits of armor for 10 million credit I guess
but it'll help you get there. And honestly, you don't need the best armor in the world when you're just working on becoming competent at your skills. Once you get into an advanced uh, advanced combat profession, it's usually when you really want to start looking into, you know, what am I fighting? What am I doing? What kind of damage resistance do I need? Kinetic. And uh, what's it going to take to get me there? And that's why you can just buy one of these cheap 80% kinetic grinding suits of armor and Once you become master, you can get something good to wear on special occasions. What the heck is going on here? Okay, there's some Kunga. There's some Rebels. There's some Quinkers hunting... ...bowls. So this could get interesting. Hey, as long as I don't lose another swoop, that's all I'm worried about. Because that is my last one. Uh, this implementation of Basilisk has all of the content that the pre-CU, pre-NGE servers had. It was more sandbox oriented where you set your own goals. There's a mission system that allows you to go in and do things like what I'm doing here to make money. And there's a mission system for artisans. There's a mission system for entertainers. So the mission system is very good about letting everyone have an equal opportunity to make money. There is a lot of things you can do. You can pick a faction and go that route. You can also do the theme parks that are available. Um, I'm, oh man, forward or lizard. I don't remember if the Corellian Corvette is in the game yet, but I know it was a goal they were working on. I'm pretty sure that it is. But the, uh, the Warren is in here, and it works. And there's a number of other things you can do that are pretty cool. I did a a run through of the Warren and did the entire thing from top to bottom. That was that was fun. I actually liked doing the Warren. It was it was a neat little place. It was actually pretty challenging to do by yourself. Not incredibly difficult, but it wasn't. Uh, there were a couple points where I had to watch what was going on. You can get easily overwhelmed in there if you're not very closely paying attention to what you're doing. But with the skill set that I have, Master Pistolier, Master Smuggler, Master TKM, it's it would it's hard to kill my character. So I don't have a lot of problems with death. Just inconvenience and a couple close calls in some cases. Yeah, there, there are a lot of things to do, and if you're just getting back into it, you're starting at a point where you, you're going to want to revisit all those things you liked. 
So that's a good opportunity. I, I think it took me two days to do the Rebel theme park and the uh, Imperial theme park, both. Uh, well, were two days each, and uh, Jabba's took me two days just because of walking through it. But I know I did it. I've done it in a day. And then there's other things you can do that definitely take up some bulk amounts of time, and they give some pretty cool rewards. And I do like this better than doing things like the Jinda, Jinda Cave on uh, Endor. But there are some caves that are good. Hey, you're welcome. I've played this game for a long time. It was kind of there from when they opened the doors till they closed them. Once they made it a generic shooter, I really had nothing left to do, so it was a little boring. I will be very happy. when I get my computer working and I'm not using my laptop so it stops doing so many bounce backs but I don't think that's going to be for a little while There's no pikets. Got the herb brambles. I am losing my voice today. I'm glad the game is still here for you to be able to get back into. A lot of these old games have been brought back as emulators. Uh, Matrix Online, Warhammer Online, and if it wasn't for the hard work of a lot of people who did it, then neither you nor I would be able to participate in these anymore. So all the thanks goes to those guys for putting in all that effort. Because some of them put in a massive amount of time and effort. There were a couple games that I played that I, I really wish I would have had more time with. Like that. Um, there were some games that I thought I played too long. But the selection of games was not as big when I started playing, especially MMOs. You, you had a very limited selection of multiplayer games to play. 
so you had to find interesting things in what you could. <laughs> yeah, definitely there is a time when you have to learn discipline and balance of life with multiplayer games like this because they're so involving. There there's no save button, no pause. The only thing that stops you from deciding to continue to play as yourself. So if there's a game you're particularly interested in, like EverQuest, that game can continue to run and continue to run and continue to run. And if you don't want to sign out, then... Well, you don't have to. But you will suffer for it. I can guarantee it. I'm going to take out these Ancients. Just for fun. I really just want to see if I can do it. I don't think I'm going to have a problem. No, this is not going to be a problem. I think the worst game for me that could be called an MMO addiction was Dark Age of Camelot. I spent more time in Dark Age of Camelot than any other game. Lost many nights of sleep. game dominated a great deal of time. I think it was mostly like the uh, the realm versus realm versus realm where you had to protect a castle and kind of had a hard time letting go. Uh, Dark Age of Camelot came out a little bit after EverQuest but before EverQuest 2. I was playing it because I was actually banned on EverQuest at the time, but it was out, so something to do. I wasn't really bothered about being banned from EverQuest. Uh, I mean, I kind of was in a situation where I probably needed to be just so I could get back to actually having a life. Another great game was Diablo. I love that game. 
amazing the number of clones it has spawned even still. How much longer I got on my buffs? Mm, an hour. Okay, cool. I got time. Oh yeah, so much entertainment, so little time. My life would have been perfect if I didn't have a job, didn't have family, didn't have any of those silly obligations getting in the way. And uh, for a lot of people I know, that... Uh, Playing games like that solve those problems for them, whether they wanted it to or not. Always seems to be raining no matter where I go. I seem to be the common point of the rain. I'm sure it's all my fault. Okay, getting closer. There are, is a rule that if you have more than one account on, you have to have it approved in advance, at least on Basilisk. You have to have it approved in advance, and you have to prove that you have multiple people and multiple copies of the disk. However, if you wanted to have two characters on, that you can do but they're on the same account. So the client actually allows you to run two windows. And you can log one character in on one and one in on the other. So, like I can have this character on here and I can bring my doctor on and buff it my character and then log my doctor off. Or what I did when I was gathering organic resources is I had this character on killing stuff and I had my ranger character following me all around autom on, autom on autopilot and just harvesting everything because nothing really gets resources as quick as a ranger yep one account two instances That way you only have to log on once. And you can get two characters on at once. That's how some people run uh, music and dance buff bots. They just make two characters and have them log in in two different windows and uh, set up the same macro.
And if you do try to log in three characters, it does give you an error message telling you you can only have X number of characters logged in at the same time, so... I would think if you just did that a couple of times by accident, nothing's going to happen. But if you uh, continually tried to push it, it probably is going to raise a red flag with somebody. The four sensitive slot is... Oh no, the questions are fine. Uh, the four sensitive slot is implemented using the uh, master combat profession master a uh, master combat profession do badges visit places and reveal waypoints and uh, there is a post in the forum that actually gives you a good checklist on what you need to do. But once you get all that done, you get the old man visit, you get the village quest. So, let me pull this up. All these collecting badges, visiting these places. Here's the professions, a mastered pistolier smuggler, Tereskasai. And I did Imperial Badge, Rebel Badge, Nims Badge, the Librarian, and I also did the Warren. And I actually did a guide on every planet and where the waypoints are on those planets to get the visitation badges. You don't need them all, but I did them all so that people would know by seeing them which ones were the easiest, the hardest, the trickiest, if there were tricky ones. It, yeah, it's a kind of an epic quest, but once you do that, you get you get visited by an old man. He gives you a disc. You have to protect the disc from t attack, and then you open up your four sensitive slots, and then you grind experience and do more quests to unlock boxes in the tree to become a Padawan, and then you do a rather difficult quest, at least difficult to do solo and then you become a well then you become a padawan and then you do a lot of training and then you do the night trials and there, there's a lot to do hey cyclops how are you But yeah, as far as the uh, Force-sensitive thing, it's best just to have the checklist open while you're doing it because there are certain ones that are required and there are certain ones that are optional. And you definitely want to pick and choose what you want to do so you can meet the requirements and still do what you want to do. I did all of them. But I was doing all of them to illustrate how to do all of them. You don't necessarily have to do them all. Like, I definitely would not recommend doing both the Rebel and Imperial theme parks. Because it, it actually complicated finishing my Force-sensitive slot. And it, it does open on the same character. You don't actually get another character slot. So this character, after doing those things, became my Force-sensitive character. Not like it used to be where it opened a new character slot and you got a new character.
But it wasn't bad. I think I, I did the whole thing in like a week. And that was doing it slow. Making a video on every step. And, uh... Doing every single step. So you can, you can tear through it in a lot less time than I did. Especially if you have friends. But I wanted to do it in the worst case scenario you could do it in. And I did it as a solo character and I did every one of them. <laughs> oh, the holocrons. I hated those things. I went through all the holocons on live and by the time well actually by the time the holocrons came out I'd mastered enough professions that the holocrons that I bought said that I needed to figure it out on my own so I had to master the rest of the professions in order to uh, unlock it And, uh, as such, I mastered everything and unlocked Jedi when I mastered Artisan, which was the last thing that I mastered. Um, I'm pretty sure Rage of the Wookiees came in after the combat upgrade. Not sure about that. Let me check. I don't want to give you bad information. Uh, May of 2005. Yeah, I think it was Trials of Obi-Wan that I was thinking of. Because I think that was only like... There's only like a week between when Trials of Obi-Wan came out and the NGE came out. But, yeah, I was thinking about that the other day. I was thinking about how much fun Kashyyyk was, and... It had a lot of depth to it. There were so many places you could go, and... It was easier to get lost. It had more story. It actually made it challenging. I just really wish they could jump to light speed in. That's that'd be my big thing, because it's jump to light speed it added a lot to the game. Jump to light speed was actually one of the easiest ways to master combat classes without having to fight anything. Um, you can build some some of the starship stuff 
Like, I know you can build the uh, crafting stations and things like that. But I don't know how much is in. But there's no ships. You can't fly. You can't train. You're kind of out on the dark on that one. Oh yeah, the uh, party barge was was probably my favorite ship that I had. Definitely missed that. And I will say that the old republics ship system is nowhere near as cool as this one was. It's got its own little benefit but it's still a rail shooter. Oh yeah, all the ships, well actually there, I think there were a couple ships that actually had things you could do with other people. And uh, I just find it interesting that games today a decade more later are calling that feature innovative in their games Yeah, the uh, the ship system in that game, in this game, is, is probably one of the best ones I've seen. Except for some dedicated starship games. Even then, it'll give some of those a run for its money. I always thought this was more rewarding to play than EVE Online. Yeah, they, they dress up a lot of stuff and make it look pretty now. But I can't think of the last time somebody actually came out with something innovative and new. That's the real issue, is, is what who's going to come out with the next thing that's actually new? And actually do some something to move the industry forward. Everything's just a clone of everything else now. That's kind of why I like the older games. Yeah, the uh, X-Wing and TIE Fighter games are awesome. I really wish they'd do an update to uh, fix some of the modern controllers with them. Because some of the HOTAS flight sticks just don't match up with those very well. Even though they're like made for it. They just don't have the functionality to pick them up as good as well as they should. It must have far was uh, Trials of Obi Wan. Yeah, that was that was the hard part about this game. You you could go through and do something that that required you to get something and get like half of it first time you were through 
And then they just bait you along for the rest of the time and you can spend a year trying to get the rest. That was that was my experience with the Geonosian cave. I can't count the number of times we finished that thing and I got nothing. Oh yeah. I spent most of the time I played on Yavin anyway. So when they put it in there it was it was just one more thing to do while I was there. Just bounce back and forth between killing the Clicknick Queen and at the Temple of Blue Leaf and killing the Willamanders and then running across and going as far down in the the geo caves as I could. Kind of stings if you're not prepared for it, though. Gotta watch out for all that stun damage. I think it's stun damage. I really haven't looked into it in a while. Ooh, hostile thune mother. I have made her angry. Bring her over here. Uh, she's probably coming too. She is. There we go. Got a bunch of growls and an elephant. Experience do I have? Oh, okay, I'm almost capped out at 300. I think it's 300,000. Is it 300,000 or 3 million? Yeah, I think it's 300,000. That's okay. Should be by the time I'm done with this video, I should actually have maxed it all out. 45 minutes left. Um, that's how you increase the boxes in the force sensitive box. You actually have to convert experience into these trees to raise them up. I had intended to make this character Jedi and had really planned on spending a lot of time with it but every time I started working on it I just I just couldn't bring myself to do it to grind that much experience right then I had a lot of work stuff going on I had a lot of personal stuff going on and I just kinda had to put a hold on it I think I was lucky when I got my first holocron, it was silent. So, I don't know if that was lucky or... Because I didn't have to waste a lot of time, but I'd already mastered a lot of professions and stuff. So 
I'm not sure if that was a good thing or a bad thing. part about being this defensive. I can just kind of stand here. Not really care. Stop shooting me in the head. Thunes and a Quinker Relic Reaper. That sounds like a recipe for disaster. Anyway, back to uh, talking about combat because I, I walked into a bad situation. So, you c you convert your experience points that you gain in other things so like the uh, pistol weapons experience the this that I have is maxed out my unarm is maxed out so I can go to the village and cash it in and I get experience at a certain conversion rate to add that into my force sensitive thing and then I can train these boxes And when you get enough of the boxes trained, then you can continue on your path to Jedi. Oh yeah, Rebel theme park and Jabba's theme park. Jabba's theme park's kind of fun. They actually fixed all the things that were making it difficult uh, and impossible because of bugs. So it works really well. And the Warren, uh, no problems going through the Warren. I actually ran up and down the entire thing and showed all the rooms in the entire place. I really enjoyed I don't know I just I played this game for so long and it never ceases to amaze me how well it entertains me I mean, I'll admit there are times when I I want to go play other stuff I just want to try other games I want to do other things or I've just had enough of whatever it is that I'm in the middle of and I want to do something else. It happens. But I've never reached a point in time where I feel I'm done with this game. This is one of the few. I'm not doing NPCs this time around. Doing that one. Eh. Guess we could do that one. Yeah, there's, it's, sometimes you can run around in the wrong place and never see people on this one. And sometimes that's a good thing. Sometimes it's a bad thing. There's a huge presence of people with the resources, as you can see by looking at the number of houses around me. But that doesn't mean that there's that many people playing. I think there was a thousand people playing when I looked. Let me check. It's a good question. Actually, I can't check right now. So that would uh, cause me a little bit of a to glitch out of the game to do that. But there's usually a thousand people on. 
Uh, a lot of those are bots that support characters. But there's usually a good number of people. You can either spend time with people or you can spend time by yourself. And either way it works well. I took a break from this for a while, and I'm kind of sad that I did, because I had a lot of good friends that played. And it was fun playing with them, and I don't see them anymore. I know one guy's playing on a different server. Well, that was fun. Oh yeah, the NPC bounties are fun. That was actually the uh, the first video I did on Star Wars Galaxies was leveling up my bounty hunter. And what it means to be a bounty hunter, because a lot of people had never had to, never had the opportunity to be one, but they heard about him, and everybody knows what a bounty hunter is in Star Wars, obviously if they've seen the movie. So the first video I ever made on Star Wars was about being a bounty hunter. And based on the number of views that video got, because it's up on YouTube, and it was before I did anything on Twitch, it uh, convinced me that people were actually still interested in this game. So I started making videos. And I continued making videos, and actually this is the 100th Star Wars Galaxies video that I made. And I have a hard time going after player Jedi as a, a bounty hunter because of the uh, massive experience loss. And having been pretty well tortured when I was a Jedi and live by bounty hunters, I kind of don't want to do that to other people. Hello, Dantari Battle Lord. Yeah, that's the, uh, oh, what is it? Uh, I forget what it's called, but yeah, the, where you have to guess which guy took the stuff and who's who and It kind of starts in various places. It actually moves around. There's uh, there's a lot of strategy to starting it. I haven't had time to really look into doing it again. But uh, there's there's some videos on YouTube about how to do it, and they talk about where it appears and how to get it started and how to do it. It. It's difficult to do a walkthrough on that because the questions vary so much, but there's patterns in the way they answer the questions. What's that CA I got? That's the one. 
Oh, I got another one. No, I got an armor attachment. Okay. Defense versus posture change. Yay. Yep. The uh, Darklighter farm was where you got a lot of interesting stuff. I didn't visit it yet on any of my series that I did. Mostly because those were the later quests and they were more advanced and they had more options to do things. So it was very open-ended. It was kind of hard to say, this is what you do. Except when it does this, and it does this, and it just... I couldn't think of how to put it together. Let's keep an eye on our time. Half an hour. When the uh, entertainer buffs run out, I'm probably going to end this. But I'll be back on later today. But it's uh, 2 o'clock in the morning for me, so that uh, definitely puts me in a weird position. Yep, the Corvette was a blast. I don't know what the status of, is it, of it is here, but... Uh, I enjoyed it on live. I've seen pictures of it being run through here. Just don't know if it's working correctly or not. Oh, that worked. To Southwest. Earned back quite a bit of money today. I know some of the guilds did it here. I just didn't know if they uh, they were still doing it or if it had problems. I heard at one point it was having some issues, so I didn't know if they took it down or if they finally got them fixed. That I did not follow very much. It's not something you can solo, so... This is still a better game than No Man's Sky. <laughs> Just had to say that. Since we were talking about new space type games. here now.
We'll keep Jedi. Um, been on here. Oh, how long have we been on here? A couple years, I think. Yeah, it would be a couple years. Yeah, they added a lot of things I didn't have any interest in. So I think I remember something about Hoth being in there as PvP planet. But I never went there because at that point combat didn't mean anything to me. I am Imperial. But this character was at one time a rebel. do to be useful for a guild mostly because of the things I record and the specific things I record and I have a lot of demands on my time to take me away so joining a guild would not benefit the guild at all like tomorrow I have to play another MMO and I'll probably have to play that one for a week or so. And that kind of takes away the time that I would be able to devote to a guild. And I feel like I'm letting people down. Because I'm not able to be around as much. And it's difficult for me to be able to be counted on to do guild things. So as much as I encourage somebody who's actually an active, regular player to join a guild, sometimes people's playstyle doesn't suit them being in a guild, mostly because they just don't do anything that the guild would gain a benefit for them being in the guild for. Yeah, guilds in this game do have a lot of benefits and are highly recommended for anybody who's playing. I remember so many benefits I had from being in guilds over the years in Star Wars Galaxies. But uh, I'm just not that reliably active a player. It tends to cause a little strife because when you're in a guild, people like to count on you. And when you can't be sure you're going to play that day because something else may come up or you may get commissioned to play something else, it doesn't really work out very well. Right now, I'm really behind on the games that I need to get reviewed and caught up on and played because I think I'm nine games behind. Yeah, I don't think any other game ever really came out with such a detailed city, politics, town system as this one did. And did a, such a good job with it. it it's awesome. allowing you to make rules and enforce them 
That wouldn't happen today. But he's too worried about making people angry. And the repercussions of doing something somebody doesn't like and... Not, not in this game. I can city ban you from my city and there's nothing you can do about it. Of course, that's whether you follow the rules or not. Just kind of glad they fixed the... Uh, City band bug that lets you attack GMs that you city banned. Although that was kind of funny. Oops. I really should see what that mission is before I. Okay, Northwest. Let me start focusing just a little bit. And some growls. I get some growls. Usual combination. I put my money right now. Mm, 2.8 million. Still down a bit. I just like the fact that you can have any size house you want as long as you reserve the slots for it. So you don't have to be a guild to live in a guild hall. A lot of games don't allow you to do that, and that's kind of frustrating. It's because I have a ton of money. And I want to spend it on my house. I should be able to get any house I want. It doesn't matter that it's a guild hall or a or whatever. It, it's the house that I want to use. And I'm I've always been glad that this game allows you that freedom that you can set up any house you want as long as it meets the requirements of where it goes so you have to meet the planetary requirements but once you do that there's not much to it sets of missions, so like four more. And we're probably going to run out of time. Yeah, that's a good point. I'm out of, out of being able to gain experience, so... I'll have to go turn this in, and then tomorrow we can, well, later today, I guess, we can run more missions and I can actually, I'll actually gain experience again. This is nice to run missions for money, but it's also nice to run missions for money and experience, if you can. Are you a clinker? Yes, you are. Savage clinker. Maybe he'll get hit and die. Looks like he is. Yep, he is. I'm not sure what you mean about the shuttles.
There have been a lot of shuttle problems over the years. At one point, the shuttles would show up at the end of the cycle as to when they were supposed to take off. But you couldn't board the shuttle because it left too quick every once in a while. So you would... Uh, would keep asking when it was going to come and the, the droid would say it'll be there any minute and then it would show up and leave and you couldn't get on. There have been a lot of shuttle bugs. Baby Grawl. That'd make some creature handler pretty, pretty happy. Ha! <laughs> Shuttlebugs, sh scuttlebutt. I don't even want to try to say that again. I like how some of the other people that have implemented Basil's code have made it so the shuttles are always on the ground and you can just use them whenever. And one place that I went to had it so that you could go to any shuttle or any place from any shuttle or any place. So if you went to a shuttle port, you could fly to any star port. And if you went to the star port, you could fly to any shuttle port. Or star port. I thought that was a nice, nice touch. Not to have to run back and forth all the time. And not have to go the chain that you have to go to go to certain places. Like to come here, you have to go... Uh, I came here from Tatooine, so I had to go Tatooine to Corellia. And then Corellia to Dantooine. I get it, but it's just kind of a kind of a credit sink, really, more than anything. And I don't think it stops anybody. Okay, we've got a southwest. There's a good southwest. Oh yeah, yeah. The, the shuttle doors. I get it now. I thought they put it in just so you could know when it was completely landed. But I don't remember. And I don't ever remember being able to walk up in the shuttles, but that doesn't mean you couldn't. I just don't remember it. I probably never tried. Of course, when the game came out, I was at such a bad internet connection, I was lucky to be able to travel planets. It was actually what prompted me to be an entertainer for so long when the game came out, because it was the only thing I could do and not drop connection every two seconds. Mostly because I wasn't moving, I wasn't transferring zones, I wasn't doing any of that stuff, so I ended up sitting in the cantina because that worked really well for me. Except when somebody came in and decided to fight, because that kind of kicked me off. But eventually the connection issues got resolved and I was able to actually play the game. So I picked carbines, which is probably the worst thing I could have picked. Those carbines were definitely not the weapon you wanted to use at the beginning. Hello, giraffe. I'm gonna kick this pile of rocks. You got a problem with that? Apparently you do. Thank you. 
Ranch and Crawls. I know I can kill them. Just no point to killing them for me right now. They don't net me anything. Yep, I remember the commando weapon problem. Uh, I think that bug lasted for more than a couple of months. Wasn't it like six months that commandos didn't have anything valid to use? I thought it was a very long time that commandos just had no heavy weapons that they could use. I had a friend who really desperately wanted to be a commando and he was so torn up that he could not kill anything. And he, he actually was so serious about it, he used the heavy weapons to grind all the way to master when it didn't do anything. Oh, yeah. I remember when I did Commando, I, I loved the, the ion cannon and the acid rifle. But it was a shame that it was not much damage. A lot of pretty lights, very little behind it. Yep, I think launcher pistol was what he ended up using. I think that was the only thing he could use. Lots of explosions. But I do remember even with perfect resources, I couldn't make a commando weapon that was worth anything. Oh yeah, Commando is really popular. If you want to watch some of them in action, you go out to the Crate Graveyard and watch them killing crates like crazy. They just drop them. It's, it's amazing. You get somebody like a fencer to tank for you and then you just flamethrower the heck out of it. It is an interesting thing to watch. A l slightly less effective than a, a rifleman, but way cooler. Alright, this is going to be the last pair of missions because I think our entertainer buffs are going to run out in nine minutes. And it's 2.20 in the morning, so that means I've been up for 22 hours. So I'm probably going to get some sleep, and then I'm going to come back, and we're going to play some more. Uh, i got a couple other things i got to do. Probably going to do a contest as well over on my YouTube channel. And uh, there's that uh, MMO they asked me to play. I uh, don't remember the name. But I finished downloading it earlier today, and I gotta play a little bit of that and see how that works. Soul Founder or something like that.
Northwest? I think it's northwest. No, not taking that one. Alright, we gotta take it. I don't have time to fish for missions all day. Uh, I think you're exactly right. The idea of a meta build was not even a thing in the first game, in the first part of the game. But I think eventually this game defined the concept of meta build or helped define it because that was about the stage where people started to min max and figure out detailed statistics of what did what and what you know, was effective against what, so I think this actually helped build that mentality in a in a more scientific way than you see it a lot in other games. But I know other people and as well as myself that had spreadsheets of of combat statistics and you know, what things worked well against what other things and just data, data, data on top of data. But this was the first game that I remember that anybody actually did that. And EverQuest had a lot of it too. EverQuest 2 had a whole lot of it. Where they actually recorded, you know, 80,000 strikes to a, to a test dummy to find out, you know, which weapons worked better, which ones gave more, which ones gave what percentage of increase on specials. Things like that. So even though the concept of it wasn't really a thing back then, I think this helped build that a little bit. I gotta go to this one. I won't catch the other one on the way back. I didn't hear anything about the Yuzon Vong being added, but I would not be surprised if that was something they had at one time planned to put in. There's a lot of things they added and never actually went anywhere with. Killed all my Dantari. Oh, here comes some more. Lizard hide segments, scales. It's really sad because I got to come back and hunt those to make armor. Cabin 4 had some weird stuff on it all the time. I 
Cabin 4 was a weird place. Maybe tomorrow we go there. Well, the missions don't pay very well. But we're doing okay for money, so... Let's say if we come to Dantooine for one more day. Maybe tomorrow we'll try... Somebody suggested I go to uh, Dathomir and do... Uh, the Bull Rancor missions. So maybe I'll do that. Just for a change of pace, because I've run so many missions on Dantooine. I think people would like to see some other stuff. Now, the really cool thing was when you got to see the Gundark on Endor. I think one of the other emulated servers pulled him out one day paraded him around and then shoved him back in the closet again. Ooh, a minute and a half. We're going to have to push this one. But I, I have faith. I think we can do it. Actually, if you check out my YouTube channel, I've actually done that several times in several different um, classes, melee range, everything, and did it pretty much without help from my other character. Uh, I did a whole lot of series on how to be something. Yeah, same name on YouTube. I mean, there, there's a lot of content on there that would have would have fallen off Twitch even if I'd done it on here. <laughs> yeah, sometimes the NPCs do some funny stuff. Totally worth it. Watching them do their little thing and whatever their uh, whatever their method methodology and mindset is that they're going to do what they want to do and it's pretty awesome. Kind of like bonking stormtroopers on the head. Yeah, when I played Ultima, there were people who actually defended monsters in the game. They would uh, pick a side and say they were going to not kill liches and not let anybody else kill liches, and they defended the liches and against other players, so... That game had a serious player versus player segment, so it worked out pretty well. Oh, you're welcome. Uh, happy to help out. I, I've, I've played this game for a long time, and like I said, if you if you need anything or have any questions, just drop me a line, and I'll I'll do my best to help you out if I can. I have no problem with that whatsoever. If I don't know the answer, I can generally direct you to somebody who does.
the force sensitive NPCs? Yeah, I, they were kind of weird. Sometimes I don't know how what they were set up to do. All right. Before we go any further, let's clear up any wounds we have. Get rid of all those. I hate just leaving them sit. Dantooine has the most types of Force-sensitive NPCs, I think. Other than Dathomir. Dathomir just has a bunch of witches. Oh, Scorpion. It's going to be easy for me to start up the next one. Uh, Night Sisters and. Oh, uh, what are the other ones? I'm drawing a blank. I'm really drawing a blank. That That is amazing. But I know what you're talking about. I just cannot think of the name to save my life right now. baby. Alright, so we're going to go over here because the cantina sucks to log into. Here's the mission terminals where you do the missions that I was talking about earlier. Here's the artisan ones, there's entertainer ones, uh, there's regular ones that you can do like we we're doing on the planet, so I just wanted to point those out. Anyway, I'm going to head off to bed because I just cannot even think anymore and I am really having trouble focusing on what I'm doing. So I'm going to pick this up again later today. i got some other things I'm probably going to do, splitting things across YouTube and Twitch, and we'll see how that works out. But uh, I want to thank you guys for sticking around and watching me play Star Wars Galaxies today. And uh, if you ever see me in game, just drop me a note, wave, whatever you want to do. And uh, look forward to seeing you guys in there. So keep me posted on how things go with you. But I will catch you guys later. And you guys have a nice night. And good luck in your games. See ya.